guys uh, today we're going to learn about the functions of the human brain the previous lesson was on its uh, structures and today's lesson would be on its functions this will be more of a theoretical lecture with nothing much of a concept over here so you just need to know which part of the brain does what function so about me i'm uh, kaushik chari and uh, i'm currently studying my mbbs from aims and you can follow me on an academy using this link so functions so basically everything everything that you can think of your very existence is just because of the human brain from consciousness to breathing intelligence senses memory everything is just because of the human brain so and i would classify the functions of the human brain just on the basis of the anatomy which is much more important than this uh, chapter so it's divided into the four brain or the prosencephalon this this is a recap from my previous lesson which contains the cerebrum the hypothalamus and the thalamus the mid brain or mesencephalon the hind brain or rhombencephalon which contains the cerebellum pons and and uh, the medulla i think that's a bit of a mistake over here this should be the medulla so it's the cerebellum pons and the medulla oblongata and it's symmetrically divided into the left and right halves so this is the brain as you can see uh, this is the cerebrum this is the thalamus and the hypothalamus this is what is this this is the ventricle of the brain and if we add on the other half it becomes the other ventricle this is the mid brain this is the mid brain above the mid brain we have the third ventricle and then this is the cerebral aqueduct which connects the third to the fourth ventricle this is the pons the cerebellum and the medulla to which together form the hind brain this is the mid brain and this is the fore brain so this is just a recap of the previous uh, lesson moving on the prosencephalon uh, this <coughs> sorry the cerebellum is the seat of intelligence personality and behavior so the cerebrum is made up of uh, convolutions which are yeah the gyri and the sulci so it is the seat of all intelligence personality whatever you are is because of the cerebrum and it contains motor sensory and association areas so this is an important line there are certain areas that control the motor functions there are certain areas that control your sensory functions and there are certain areas that associate these two areas which are neither sensory nor motor which are called as the association areas so this much is what you have to remember about the cerebrum and uh, additional to this you also need to know that it's made up of gyri and sulci so the thalamus the thalamus is basically the relay center of the brain so it is like a relay station it is like the central station to which all impulses come first and then it's distributed due to the cerebrum and other other way also is true that all impulses from the cerebrum first go to the thalamus and then they go downwards to the other parts of the body so it basically acts as the relay center of the brain the hypothalamus is where you have the temperature control you have the eating and drinking centers and the two hormones that are secreted by neurons of the hypothalamus uh, this would be more clear when you read about the endocrine system that the posterior pituitary actually secretes the adh and oxytocin but the neurons for uh, uh, this these two hormones are actually in the hypothalamus so the hormones actually are carried from the hypothalamus to the pituitary and from the pituitary then they are secreted into the blood so the neurons of the hypothalamus also secrete two hormones the adh and oxytocin so it is very important to remember these two hormones and uh, the hypothalamus is also the thermostat of the body so it just maintains the temperature it maintains the base level at which the temperature is to be maintained uh, the prosencephalon is actually the cerebrum has two hemispheres the brain the two hemispheres of the brain are connected by this corpus callosum i have already talked about this in my previous lecture that the two halves of the brain need to communicate and obviously they need a mode of communication which is the corpus callosum and also the prosencephalon the cerebrum actually the cerebrum of the prosencephalon has a limbic system limbic system is associated with your emotions the anger happiness sadness everything the emotions are associated to the limbic system so the limbic system consists of these names are very hard initially but you will get hold of them over uh, eventually uh, which are the amygdala the hippocampus <coughs> the hypothalamus which are involved in emotional responses and sexual behavior so these are some names that you have to get hold of so what are the constituents of the limbic system amygdala hippocampus and hypothalamus this is what you need to remember at this level 
the mid brain so coming to the mid brain the mid brain consists of mainly uh, four round swellings uh, which are arranged in the form of a cross uh, these are known as the corpora quadrigemina so this is one important part of the mid brain that you should know and they're commonly asked as mcqs also so they are corpora quadrigemina i'm going to show you a picture in the next slide so that you understand them better there are four uh, round swellings the two of them are superior two of them are inferior and the superior ones are called as the superior colliculi which are associated associated with the sense of uh, vision and the two inferior colliculi are associated with sound so this would be more much more than enough to remember that there are two superior colliculi and the two inferior colliculi one is associated with sight and the other with sound so this is a picture of the mid brain okay this is the picture of the mid brain this part is the mid brain and you can obviously guess that this is the uh, fourth ventricle because from the mid brain you should remember the cerebral aqueduct that connects it to the fourth ventricle and this part is the medulla this part is the medulla and from here we have the spinal cord i told you that the medulla extends and forms the spinal cord so this mid brain here you can see one two three four four swellings which are arranged in the form of a cross so this is what we call as the corpora quadrigemina these two superior swellings are associated with the sense of sight and these two inferior swellings are associated with the sense of sound so this would be more than enough to know that we have something called the corpora quadrigemina uh, the rhombencephalon the rhombencephalon consists of the pons the medulla and the cerebellum pons medulla and cerebellum constitute the rhombencephalon pons contains fibers that interconnect many parts of the brain so it's more than enough at this point to just remember that the pons has many fibers that interconnect the brain and the medulla has centers for respiration cardiovascular regulation and gastric secretion so uh, this is a very important center and usually if someone is struck on the head at the back with a with a rod then usually they die because uh, the medulla is injured uh because they contain centers of respiration cardiovascular uh functions and the gas gastric secretions are not the main reason but because it has the centers of respiration and cvs control a, uh, a strong blow to the back of the head can kill the person because it can injure the medulla the so cerebellum is involved in motor coordination so the cerebellum is uh, this part of the brain that is just present below the brain stem i can show you in the picture over here yeah so this is the cerebellum you can see the cerebellum over here uh it's it's attached to the to the brain uh, stem you can say to the medulla by the cerebellar peduncles that's that's not required but you should remember that cerebellum is associated with motor coordination so if the cerebellum is damaged if the cerebellum is damaged the person would have problems in walking in uh, moving his limbs in coordination between his limbs so these are the problems that arise due to cerebellar lesions so overall in this lesson you need to know the anatomical divisions of the brain the prosencephalon the mesencephalon and the midbrain and the rhombencephalon and the functions of each of its constituents so this is more of a theoretical lecture but many questions come from this uh, so i'd advise that you uh, read and remember this lesson very much because uh, many mcqs actually come through from this chapter so that's it for this lesson and thanks for watching